Welcome to Really Cool Stuff for the Home podcast, sponsored by HomeWorks. And now with today's show on all the ways to improve your home is your host, Denise Sanchez. Hi, everybody. This is Denise Sanchez from HomeWorks, Really Cool Stuff for the Home. And today we're going to be talking about this is my favorite, favorite product line that we offer, and it's Mila. This is a company that was established in the 1890s, and it's a German company. Everything is made in Germany. And here with me today is Jeff Pellucci. He is a national products and sales trainer for the entire U.S., and he is one busy man. He is also one very knowledgeable man. He's kind of funny, too. <laughs> He's always got me cracking up. So Jeff, how are you no doing? I am doing great, Denise. Thanks for having me today. This oh, is going to be fun. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. First of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about Mila because it is a very unique company. In fact, maybe the only company in the world that's like this. Um, I know that they yeah. have five large factories in Germany and they're family owned, but can you kind of expand on who Mila is? Yeah, Mila is a privately held company by the, the Mila and Zincon families. They um, uh, they are a fourth generation family owned company. Um, they pride themselves in building their own things, uh, even getting down to making our own machines that make our machines. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. It is driven by this whole concept of immer besser, which means forever better, always better. And uh, that translates into many examples where we don't just make something uh, to fix something. We make something to make it better just to make it better. Right. Mm -hmm. And we do things like that all the time. So it's uh, definitely been an interesting experience. I've been with them now for 24 years. That's amazing. And uh, I've seen some of the most amazing things I've ever seen technologically have been from Mila. In fact, they've come out with a lot of firsts. I believe they're the first with the first computer controlled washer, dryer, and dishwasher for the world That's in their correct. early 70s, right? They're That's also correct. the That's first correct. with yeah. Wi-Fi um, where we can ask. Uh, we... Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, there are so many firsts. I mean, we had the first uh, built-in steamer. We had the first built-in um, coffee system. We had the world's first cutlery tray, third rack system, and a dishwasher. Um, we made uh, one of the world's first, uh, certainly Germany's first, one of the world's first dishwashers at all mm -hmm. in 1929. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's just so many firsts, it's actually hard to list them all. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I know that there is a contention about who made the first washer. It may have been Maytag <laughs> or simultaneously a Mila, correct? Well, well, believe it or not, they actually applied for their patents uh -huh. on the same day of the same year. Oh my if gosh. believe that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just a crazy coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if at the time they were actually knew of each other's mm -hmm, patents, mm -hmm. but they literally applied for their uh, top loading wooden tub, you know, uh, star type agitator on mm -hmm. the same day of the same year, mm -hmm. just in different countries. And, and I think both companies, uh, Mila started out, wasn't it as making butter churns? That's exactly right. Uh, butter churns and cream separators. Yep. That's Can exactly you believe right. that? And, and you know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to get to a washer from there. Right. They kind of do the same thing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, I remember back in the in the '90s. I think it was the mid '90s. I was invited to go on a trip to Germany to go see the factories, and I was, you know, excited about going to see the factories. I was really excited about going to Germany. Very excited, but I was amazed yeah. at the factories. It was like being on the Starship Enterprise. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. Like you said, they. They have yeah. they have robots back then that were making a lot of the products and the robots had Mila on them just like you said they made their yeah. own robots that's amazing yeah. I don't know of any company that could say yeah. that so yeah, I mean when that that process is called vertical integration we're mm -hmm. we're among the highest vertically integrated manufacturers of anything in the world meaning we make more of our own stuff mm -hmm. than almost any company in the world in any category and so that you, know, you all have your own engineers. I remember um, uh, it was it's been a while now, but you could go into this room and you could see this huge screen where they would have 3D imaging of a product that they yeah. were developing. That's just amazing yeah. to me that they did all that in house. Well, 
absolutely amazing. Oh, the, and I it, also it is shocking. Every time I go over there, I learn more. I also remember this stuck with me, and I don't know if they're still doing this, Jeff, but I remember going through the washer and the dryer, which we're going to be talking about today, folks. They're amazing washers and dryers. But I remember going through the factory where they made their washers and dryers, and there was one man that was sitting there with a nylon. And what he did was he would take his hand with the nylon and go around the drum on the inside to make sure there were no burrs. Do they still do that? Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's Absolutely. incredible. You talk um, about... Yeah. You, yeah, there's about, uh, there's about uh, four that do that at any one period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they literally have a white nylon stocking that they wear on their hand. And they are taught a pattern that mm -hmm. they have to run around the outside of the drum mm -hmm. and the inside of the drum. And if the drum is snagged, snags the nylon at all, that drum is pushed aside to be repolished. If it does it again, the drum is melted and re-poured. Oh, that's amazing. Because these really, truly are care machines. They really are. Yeah. Um, we had some great stories when we were over there in Germany. It's it just amazing. I've been over several times now through Mila, and it's yep. always wonderful. The one story I always talk about is when we were in Cologne, it poured down rain, and we were going, you know, shoveling from here to there, and we got a little wet. We all decided to just dance in the rain, you know, in the streets of Cologne. So I always tell that story very, very romantically, but I was a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. yes. Yes, I remember that. Yes, you, I do. Yes, uh, great times, great times. Um, so I wanted to talk about their amazing washers and dryers. I want to get to the dryer first because this is an amazing accomplishment. Now, there are it some is. things that they've done over in Europe that we haven't done here. Like their version of the EPA has mandated no more venting. Can you kind of just uh, talk about that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So that, that means that the dryer is a condenser dryer. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you talk to anybody here in the States about a condenser dryer, the first thing they'll do is say, no way, I'm not getting a condenser dryer. And the reason for that is because of two things. Categorically, they tend to steam up the room, and also they tend to take about two and a half hours to dry. Other than that, they're great. And they use uh, a lot of energy us, to do it. Do a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Well, we've never had those problems, okay? And especially when you look at the new version of our dryers, uh, not only are they condenser, but they don't heat up the room, they don't steam up the room, they dry in normal dry times like a regular vented dryer would, and they only run on 120 volt. So they run on half the power. They have no heating elements. And so they are, their heating system is a very large, very powerful um, heat pump system mm -hmm. inside the dryer. And so the combination of all that not only makes it very powerful, very fast, extremely energy efficient, there's nothing even close to it, but it is the quietest dryer out there. I mean, one of the things that impresses people a lot is when I turn them on, they, they, are, they have a hard time believing that it's, that it's actually running. I had one dealer actually tell me that, no, well, we know the dryer is still in demo mode. And I was like, no, <laughs> it's actually drying right now. Mm -hmm. they, they really thought it was just in demo mode. So it's, it's, they're incredibly quiet as well as being powerful. Right. I like to turn on the washer and the dryer both and so people can not hear them. That's how quiet they are. Right. They're amazing. That's amazing. Right. Uh, they're they're also, amazing. when we're talking about energy savings, I know that this is in writing. They're 60% more energy efficient, I've heard, than any dryer on the market. Yep. And that includes Mila's yep. last drying uh, machines as well. That's how energy efficient right. they are. So, and the reason... Well, because there's no heating element. Right. And and no, the vent, you, you know, don't, ha no right. Um, but it's a lot like our ACs here, especially in the South where we have heat pumps. There's actually refrigerant inside the machine, correct? So it's totally right. different right. than a regular condenser dryer. Oh, it's totally different. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then um, um, also these are small footprints. Now, this is a big deal because size really matters in Europe. So they are just, they're about the size of a dishwasher, wouldn't you say? 
about the size of a dishwasher. That's really good approximation. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I had a 24-year-old Mila washer and dryer, and mine was about the same size, but I could hold about 12 pounds of clothing. I raised two kids on them, um, never had Mm -hmm. any issues. Small. I love the small footprint. It saved me a lot of space in my utility room, so I could put other appliances in there. But now they went for the same footprint from 12 pounds to 18 pounds. That's a huge that's difference, right. and that's a lot of clothes. How do they do yeah. that? Or do you know? <laughs> it, it actually had a. It actually had to do a lot with the suspension system. They they changed the framing on the mm-hmm. inside, mm-hmm. and as a result of the framing and the pistons and the springs and the cradles, uh, they were actually able to hold a larger body suspended in midair mm-hmm. in the inside, mm-hmm. and yet keep the body the same, mm-hmm. or almost identical the same. So. It is about the size of a dishwasher, but when you consider that, you know, the average load done in the United States in any washer, no matter what size washer you've got, is about seven pounds. I mean, mm-hmm. if you went and bought, you know, a, um, say, a, a Tide Pod mm-hmm. or something like that, those are made for seven pounds. If you look at the cap on a bottle of detergent, they're mm-hmm. designed for seven pounds mm-hmm. of dry weight clothing. And when you consider that these washers hold two and a half times that amount, mm-hmm. That's that's pretty astonishing, especially when you consider that they take up half the footprint exactly. you know, of most of the water. Yeah. In fact, I know yeah. that we waited for, uh, as Americans here, we waited for the series of this model to come to the United States. But Mila had a hard time getting over to us because that footprint is very important in Europe. But when you got the large capacity, yeah. the sales were so brisk over in Europe, you couldn't get to us. That's what I understood. No, we, uh, we, yeah, we, we, they couldn't make them fast enough. And you know what's funny is that um, uh, even to our wonderful surprise, uh, we are actually having a hard time making them fast enough because what people are discovering is that the load capacity is so big mm-hmm. and yet the footprint is so small, mm-hmm. the water use, energy use, stability during spin, sound during dry is so impressive that, that we are almost having trouble keeping them in stock. I mean, at any one period of time, we have about 150 ships on the water. Mm-hmm. We cannot keep them in stock. It's mm-hmm. just unreal. No, I know you can't keep them in stock because we probably sell a couple a day and we're having trouble keeping them in stock. Yeah. <laughs> People love these yeah. machines. Um, it, I've never sold so many washers and dryers, Jeff, until they came out with yeah. this series. And, and people were hearing about them uh, before they came to the U.S. I guess they go and Google, you know, about uh, washers and dryers and they would get over to the to yep. England or the European models and they would call us and ask about it. Yep. Um, so I, yep. I have a little story. I have a Bella Note um, coverlet. So it's kind of a quilted coverlet. So one side is velvet and the other side is satin. It's really pretty. So I do not take anything to the dry cleaners. I have uh, asthma and allergies and a lot of chemical sensitivities. So I just can't deal with the, the dryer, um, dry cleaning company. So I put this very heavy. I, I, you know, this is the first time I thought, you know what, this may weigh over 18 pounds. This is heavy. I put it in the washer and then I put it in the dryer and Jeff, it came out beautifully, beautifully. I couldn't yeah. have asked for a better result. I was, I was so happy about that. Yeah. And that's probably the largest thing I ever, and this was, this was a king size, but it goes to the floor, right? So it's going to be yeah. bigger than a regular king size anything. Yeah. So it did a beautiful well, job. You, know, you can actually... Yeah, you can actually do king size comforters in there. I mean, a lot of people don't don't realize that the 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 king size dimensions mm-hmm. are fine for the machine. It's the weight that right. you've got to be careful right. with. So if, if you had like a king size heavyweight comforter, like a foam comforter, yeah, like a foam comforter. Right. But if you had a but if you had a if you had a king size medium weight, right, like maybe a faux down, something yes. like that, or even real not down. Not only does it fit in there. Mm. Beautifully, yeah. It cleans beautifully. Yeah. Well, because I can. The fins are made of polished steel. Nothing gets nothing gets abrased. Right. So it comes out in one piece. Right. And also, they have that uh, honeycomb effect too, which we'll talk about, which is pretty cool. Kind of yeah. acts like so that it is. so that the clothes really never rub against the drum the way that it's designed. There's so many neat things about it. Yeah. These are true care really machines. Is. 
They're not just washers yes, and dryers. Are. They are care machines. The one thing about the Europeans I've noticed is that they don't have as many clothes as we do, but they have nicer clothes, wouldn't you say? So, and no, seriously, they have nicer clothes. I mean, they're going to be more the Gucci, you know, type. And so they'll use these machines to take care of their clothing. Um, now I want to talk about the. There, there's several different models, by the way, of the um, of the dryers. Um, they run in prices from 11.99 to 18.99. So anyone's budget can just about be you know taken mm -hmm. care of that. Mm -hmm. Your expectation for these to live or at least 20 years. So that's a pretty good you know um, return of investment, wouldn't you say? <laughs> when yeah. you can have something oh, I, like that. I totally agree. But yeah, especially when you consider something you just said, Denise, which is critical. And that is that there's no point in trying to get clothes clean if you destroy them in the process. Right. So one of the things that Europeans know very clearly, especially with Mila, is that the price, the cost of a single load can exceed the cost of the machine. Mm -hmm. So when you consider the cost of a really nice pair of jeans, a nice cashmere sweater, right. you know, the nicer clothing, a cost of a load can exceed the machine. Mila is the only brand that puts just as much engineering into caring for the clothing as we do cleaning them. Right. And that's why, you know, we can we can safely mm -hmm. say that your clothing will last four times longer in our drum. Exactly. You know, there's just no other drum out there that can clean and care at the same time like we yeah. can. Yeah. Here's another little story. So one of my um, um, employees, she bought a, um, uh, a a dryer. She bought a dryer. And she, um, she, that's all she could afford was the dryer. And then she went and later on she bought the washer. And she came in and she said, you know, I think there's something wrong with my dryer. I said, why is that? She goes, well, there's no, uh, there's never anything in the filters. There's hardly anything in there. And that's because her pr last washer was destroying the fibers yeah. in her in her clothing yeah. so that when she put it in the dryer, it, you would see it in the fluff filter, right? Well, when she got her meal a washer she thought there was something wrong that is drastic you know the results difference so she thought something wasn't that right because to do with the drum and the fin. right yep. exactly so speaking of the washers these are amazing washers so on the washers, one of the neat things about Mila is that they've always provided us with cleaning products for our dishwashers and for our washers and dryers. They've always brought in something for us because they've always said, you know, um, your cleaning products that you have in your big box stores, they're not very good. So they don't make us look as good. You don't have very many enzymes. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. So they always, you know, really asked us to carry the other products. So we did, and we've always been successful with it. So what they did now is they've actually brought in something that can not only, um, you can put it inside the machine, so not only does it dispense it, but now it doses. So you don't have the yeah. situation where you've got oversudsing, where people think more is better. That's not the case at all, especially when you have a front load. Not the case at all. Right. Yeah. So, so on their their uh, models, they have four models. Again, from eleven ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine, and they're all wonderful, just like their dryers. There's not like a like a they're they're good, better, best as far as features and programs, not as far as is uh, quality and cleanability and, and being able to right. dry effectively. But can you talk about, because I know you were excited about this when you were actually showing me the, um, the, the engineers that do the chemicals and, and how little it takes to do. Can you expand on that? Yeah, yeah the entire twin dose system or our entire um, uh, chemical division, a lot of people don't realize we have chemical engineers not just mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and structural engineers, we have chemical engineers. And so as a result of that, we've developed an entire line of detergents that is truly unlike any other detergent you could buy. And believe me, there, I mean, I could name them, but I won't, but there are some good <laughs> detergents out there. But the fact is, is that when you look at Mila's detergents, the selection of enzymes that we use, their speed of activation, meaning how quickly they become active in water, and how long they live in the main wash dwarfs anyone else. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, even if you put Mila detergents in somebody else's machine, mm -hmm. you're going to get better results. Exactly. Because the chemicals actually really are that good. And here's the best part, especially because you know you have um, <clears throat> you know allergies 
to some chemicals, right? One of the really nice things about our detergents is you'll notice that the liquids are very thin, right? They're not as thick as some of these other ones out there. Mm -hmm, it's a mm -hmm. very low viscosity liquid. So they, they leave very, very little, if any, residue at all in the machine, in the clothing. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, when you rinse them, they actually rinse out, which has a mm -hmm. very, very tiny, tiny little signature left on the phone, on the, on the um, clothing. We do offer, of course, low allergen formulas as well mm -hmm. that leave no residues, mm -hmm. but they clean just as well because they have the same enzymes. I have a customer that has um, a, a couple of dogs that uh, she doesn't have children. She has her dogs, and those are her children. And she's a lovely lady. And she came in, and her biggest fear was this. She wanted the Miele washers and dryers. Two fears. One, would it take care of her bedding for her dogs because she couldn't do it in her present washing machine? And she was also concerned about detergent leaving a residue. So we overcame that with the sensitive, sensitive version, you know. And then I... I invited her. I said, "Look, why not, because it's such a big deal about this one piece of uh, article of, of uh, uh, bedding yeah. that you want to do. Bring it in. Let's wash it and dry it and see what happens." Did a beautiful job. Good she idea. did. She brought it in. Did a beautiful job. She's probably had hers about eight months, and she's probably gone through I think about three things of the sensitive uh, detergent. She loves it. Yeah. She says it's yeah. done a beautiful job. Yeah. There's been no harm to her animals, and she thinks it's one of the best purchases she ever made. I mean, to get her. To come on and do a testimonial. It's just, she's so so proud I'm not of her machine. Surprised. These type of stories don't surprise mm -hmm. me at all. Mm -hmm. And and an, another neat thing about these machines. Let's talk about the the honeycomb and how the smaller okay. uh, water exit holes. How that makes a big difference. Can you expand on that? Makes a huge difference. Um, that concept, Denise, is called drum patterning, and that's when a drum's actual pattern influences or determines the cleaning results or fabric care results. Honeycomb is patented. No one else has it. There are lots of other patterns and drums out there, but they're more decorative. Ours is 100% functional. And the idea behind it <clears throat> is that its shape creates faster and more complete saturation. And the faster the clothing gets saturated, the longer it's clean, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. The second part is the actual material. The material of the drum is a polished, number one polished, grainless steel. It even has a higher nickel content to make it harder. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, there is very, very little abrasion. So your, your friend that has no lint on her clothing, mm -hmm. that's because that mirrored surface is so smooth. It's, it's as smooth as glass. Mm -hmm. So it's so smooth and the fins are so smooth that they abrase very little. So you take very little lint off the clothing and the, the shape of the honeycomb saturates the clothing so that drum shape and drum material is really the key to cleaning without abrasing and maintaining the clothing's integrity for a far longer period of time mm -hmm. here's the crazy part the outer drum is made of the same material and polished to the same smoothness as the inner drum now you wouldn't think that would be necessary nobody else does that mm -hmm. but the fact is what that does is it dramatically reduces the accumulation and growth of bacteria right. in the outer drum, mm -hmm. but no drum smell. Mm -hmm. And even the gaskets, there is a special material that's in the gasket. Talk about that. Well, for example, one of the most impressive things in our dryers is that we use Kevlar uh, in our door gaskets because it never loses its shape. You know, that's the that's the same material they make bulletproof vests right. out of, right? Uh -huh. But uh, it never loses its shape. This is why we don't bleed heat into the room because we have essentially bulletproof <laughs> door gaskets. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, made out of Kevlar mm -hmm. in our dryer. It's, mm -hmm. you know, look, if you're going to design something to last 20 years, you've got to use different materials, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And so that's why we have nickel hardened steel. That's why we have Kevlar door seals, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we enamel the front of our machines that you just, you can't build something that's going to last 20 years. Oh, and, and speaking of which, my 24 year old washer and dryer without enamel, it looked like the day I bought it, Jeff. I mean, seriously, there was yeah. nothing wrong with my watch. I just wanted the new features of the yeah. new models. And one of the reasons why yeah. is, you know, until until COVID hit, I had someone that would come in once a week to help me out, you know, with my chores. I work six days a week and have five grandkids. And when I'm not working, it's not yeah. doing house chores. You know, I want to go see my grandkids. Right. But the thing right. that she always did is she always put in too much soap. You know, more is better kind of a thing. And... 
I could go home and take my towels that looked beautiful, but they were kind of sometimes crunchy, and I would put them in the washer yep. without any soap, and I would have a mass yep. of suds, massive suds. Yep. So yep. I really wanted that feature where you could put in these uh, cartridges, and it dispenses and it doses, depending on how it's soiled, whether you're doing something yep. delicate, whether you're doing something white or color. I mean, there's just no thinking about it. It just does it automatically for you and perfectly for you. Yep. And it's also a, a cost savings because you actually are saving uh, I think it's like 30 percent of your uh, consumption of cleaning products because you're not overusing them yeah that's a very common mistake by the way mm -hmm. I mean there, there's a reason that uh, manufacturers of other detergents make the cap you know bigger than the lines that they draw on <laughs> right so they'll say fill to this line right but everybody always fills way beyond that right they actually will tend to fill the cap they know they know this. Yeah, that's that's why they make the dispenser wells and dishwashers bigger mm -hmm. than a tab, because they 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 know that people are going to overuse the detergent. Yeah, they so need more with product. Windows, yeah, you'll never have that problem. But it's you not really good. Good efficiency there. It's not good for the machine. It's not good for your clothing. That's no. for sure. Um, not good at all. No, yeah. it's not. Uh, so. I, I also have customers that will say, some, you know, especially American-made type things. They'll come in and say, well, is it American? No, it's made in Germany. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> you know, Germans, yes. we love Germans. We love German yes. manufacturing, yes. German engineering. In yes. fact, that's a heads up. Okay, no problem there. Um, yes. But what are some of the things, the feedback that you're hearing from, uh, from customers when they, when they buy these washers and dryers? So there are, there are two things I can bring up that, that I think are my favorites. One um, is actually a colleague of mine who uh, uh, works up in Scottsdale, Arizona, and um, her little boy had decided to take his brand new tennis shoes, <laughs> fire engine red, and decorate them with a black permanent Sharpie. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, she called me on the phone. She was like, oh, my God, can I do anything about this? So I explained to her how to use our detergent and mm -hmm. uh, told her exactly what to do to pre-treat these. I mean, they were literally decorated with black sharpies. How cute is that? And how to wash <laughs> them. And in one wash, they came completely clean with the red intact. It was beautifully red like they were brand really? new. Yeah. But there was absolutely no Sharpie uh -huh. on there at all. And uh, that I've got pictures of that. That was amazing. And the second thing that I love hearing over and over again, this is um, more of a, of, a, of a broad brush, but I hear it all the time is I didn't know what clean meant right. until I used Windows. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a big one. Yeah, yes. And people come, you know, I tell customers, you know, let's back off on the bleach. I don't think you're going to need you, you need the bleach. I mean, you can use it. It al The machine allows for you to use it. But I think, I think you're going to find that you don't need it. And bleach is very damaging for your clothing and the environment. And the feedback I get is they don't ever use bleach anymore. And another thing, too, well, when we started carrying these, I was really um, uh, wondering what my customers would, how many would keep using the twin dose because Mila allows you to use regular soap. You don't have to use their soap. Sure. You can use regular soap. Sure. But I've been amazed. Yep. I don't know anyone that has told me, eh, I'm going to go back to my other soap. Everyone tells me how much they love that feature. And they, I, man, I make sure I have that stuff in stock, especially now with COVID. I make sure I keep a yeah. lot of it in stock. Yeah. Well, I mean, twin dose is, is, um, Windows is a game changer. Denise. It I don't is. know how else to say it. It's, mm. it's it's not just the the accurate dosing, it's the sequencing of the two phases, mm -hmm. right? You've got ultra phase one, which is the six enzyme low viscosity detergent. So it's going to dissolve and leave no residues, but break down those stains. But then you've got ultra phase two, mm -hmm. right? And ultra phase two is a very concentrated form of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, mm -hmm. and that second stage when introduced at the right time in the right amount will literally remove stains that have been set for years right right it, it's the most astonishing combination mm -hmm. and you don't have to think about it at all right exactly you know? mm -hmm. when, when all of a sudden you realize holy crap this thing i thought this was ruined <laughs> right and it's not ruined anymore I, it really is an eye opener. Right, and they and they also have other specialty products. They call cap dosing. There's a special place yes. inside the soap drawer where you can put these individual yes. cap dosing. Like, say you're doing your down comforter, which I've done a, a lot of times, and you don't want to use a detergent that will strip the oils out of your down. You know, so it's not as 
fluffy as it used to be. That's right. So, and also right. silks. I do my silks in there. I do, I do wool. I do all kinds of different um, uh, items. I don't ever go to the, the dry cleaners. I use that. Um, so that's yeah. another thing that they have as well. It's just, it's an amazing product. And I could go on and on. the cotton renew? The, no, I've heard, I've heard that though. I've actually had people tell me that they were able to restore. I think one lady was saying something about some jeans, or was it you yeah. that told me that story? Tell that story real quick. No, well, I mean, there I've got so many, but the cotton <laughs> renew is a is a concentrated form of one enzyme called an amylase, and it it um, it basically removes all the broken fibers from your clothing. Mm -hmm. So these these fibers settle into your weave, and it makes things look faded, uh -huh. and it removes them. So, for example, an old faded T-shirt or pair of jeans or something like that, you you wash them in there, and it comes out, and they look almost new. I know, yes, and, it's and it, amazing. It's just shocking. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the, the examples in, uh, that I've seen are are just shocking mm -hmm. to me, just shocking. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called Cotton Renew. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to try that in some of my things that I have and see how that. You should. Yes, I should. Jeff, I could go on and on and on and on, and I think we are at our time limit for today. I've kept you long enough, but okay. we're going to have you on. You promised that you would come on and talk about some of the other things that Mila has to offer. You are a wealth of knowledge. Absolutely. That's why I requested you, and you're always a lot of fun. <laughs> but um, you, MilaUSA.com is a great website, and when you want to bring the product up, like say you want to look at the watchers, go to the washers and you'll see that discover more click on that before you yep. do on the individual products because that gives you an idea of all the different videos and information about all the features that they have and then as always homework on youtube as well yes yes homework's really cool stuff though for the home where we're going to make your homework better for you with great products like these jeff thank you and see you again next week my pleasure thank you thank you Denise. thanks so much bye-bye